So welcome back everyone, it's Keith once again, and today we're looking at the Radeon RX 5700. This is the non-XT version, you can tell because it has this nice bland uh, gray metal, at least it's metal, I'll give them that, but no back plate, so whatever. Anyway, throw this to the side. So that's the retail, there's the box for it, retail RX 5700 from XFX. Now, I got this card in to put into the lineup as we do new testing for new games and such, and any other AIB variants that may come through that we want to compare it against. And the most important thing for me and the most exciting thing was the prospect of soft power play table mods. Now this is something that was really big with Vega. I didn't really mess with it a lot with Vega because I found for me the most fun I had with uh, Radeon Vega was the Vega 56 and flashing into the 64 then overclocking and undervolting and doing all that. That's where I had my most fun with Vega but power play tables were pretty big when it came to Vega tweaking. And Helm created a great Radeon tweakers group uh, application and made power play tables for it and it was great and well Navi is here now and we were told that well not so much that this was going to be a thing here it was going to be a little bit more tricky turns out not not really um Igor over at Tom's Hardware Germany so Igor's lab he did it on his video on his YouTube channel we'll link that down in the description below he took the power play tables and applied them to his Radeon RX 5700 XT. I almost said Vega. They, they, they've gotten so used to these other names, but he applied the power play table through the soft power play table mod in a registry mod to the 5700 XT and was able to get insane overclocks from it and taking the power and pushing the power limit way up by like 95% and getting upwards to 2.2 gigahertz on the 5700 XT. Now, of course, he did it on water, doesn't recommend doing it on air, but with the 5700, it ran a bit cooler anyway, and the clocks were very conservative out of the box for this particular card, and there were power play tables available for this card. Now, I've seen other places where they've taken this, and they've done like a, a static scene and changed the, the performance numbers, so they, they overclocked it and was showing you a variance, but what I wanted to do is take a stock out of the box performance and then compare it to the manual overclock without modding anything and then did doing the power play mod uh the, the soft power play table mod uh really get me any kind of extra performance so if you want to know how to do that mod i'm going to link down again down in the description to buddy of mine over at son of a tech where he goes through a very detailed how to see igor's uh lab doesn't really do that and some of the other channels they haven't shown it because they don't want to be the ones responsible for you blowing your stuff up but um Son of a tech is cool with it, I guess. But he does a really good job explaining how to do it in case you're very unfamiliar with messing with uh, registry modifications and such. So hit that up if you want to know how to do it. But let's um, let's jump into kind of the results that I got over here on the X370 test bench using the 9900K. Now, I was clocked at 4.7 for these, but I'm not comparing it to other cards, so that's kind of irrelevant as long as I had a consistent clock speed. And we applied the mod after, like I got one set of numbers all clean, uh, fresh drivers, uh, stock, then overclocked, and then did the mod. So let's take a look at the first one, which is going to be the most obvious result here. So we're going to take a look at Time Spy, and we see here that going from stock to manual overclock, we go from 7859 up to 8166, which is a nice 300-ish point jump. Then another 200 points up from there with the small, uh, small, I keep on saying small, the soft power play table mod so looking at stock to the mod you're looking at about a 500 point variance so a very welcome increase but how does that translate to gaming so for gaming we jumped in to forza horizon 4 at 1440p with ultra preset uh we see here not not a whole lot of difference uh you know at stock the I, the gpu was running about 1690 megahertz on average and went up from there but hovered around 1690 uh, OC got me about 1790 and then the power soft the soft power play table mod got me about anywhere from 1810 to 1850 this was the actual clocks that it was sitting at not just where I targeted it and that soft power play table was with the with the more power I even took it all the way up to plus 90 and still got right about here um, looking at the Division 2, we see, again, not a whole lot of variance here. Uh, we did get up to, you know, some benefit on the 0.1% low, so that kind of smoothed things out with the 
soft power play table mod, but not a huge variance. And Far Cry New Dawn, again, didn't see a whole lot of change, except it actually saw a regression with the soft power play table. And what was interesting about that is I did take, I went back and did additional runs with this particular game because this one showed the most instability once the soft power play table was introduced. And it would, the power would fluctuate real hard in here and the clocks were very inconsistent. Uh, it wasn't until like the third or fourth run that things started kind of smoothing out. So eh, it was real interesting. But what does that mean for thermals? Well, this chart's honestly quite useless because uh, the stock and overclock was with the stock fan curve and with the soft power play tables, I, I did 75% on the fan. And that was because I was trying to make sure that I kept the temperatures low. And as far as temperatures go, I mean, you see there, it, they, they stayed low. The, uh, even the t junction temperature with the, the soft power play table never went over uh, 70C. So it just, you know, it is what it is. And even with the, the power, uh, once the, the actual load on the GPU, and this was using the looping of the second test in time spot, it's what I use to do uh, GPU load. So it's pretty heavy. So every GPU gets kind of hammered pretty hard here. And it, you can see the power did go up. So the power play mod was in effect, but it really didn't do a whole lot for it. You know, I talked to Igor over on Facebook regarding the numbers that I was seeing with the 5700, and he just flat out admitted it, what it is. It's a salvage chip. So the XT got the best chips and the 5700, well, I mean, it's cut down variant. And one thing that it shows here is it wasn't just artificially cut down. So there's always that question, uh, was the lower bend one, could you flash this one to maybe be in the 5700 XT, which that's something I'm going to try. Um, I've got the BIOS ready, um, but I'm no programmer, so I'm not really good at writing flashing utilities uh, for uh, GPUs, especially with ATI flash, which is great. The guys over at Tech Power Up do a great job with that. So maybe when it gets updated, I'll give that a shot. Who knows? It may be vBIOS limited, it may just be where it's limited on the 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 GPU itself, like the the BIOS limited. Uh, whereas the power the the power play tables, it may not be able to override it on this GPU. Whereas with the XT, the 5700 XT, everybody that's doing is getting really good results. So if you're going to want to buy one of the Navi cards to really tinker with, don't save 50 bucks on this one. Go ahead and spend the extra because that's where you're gonna have the most fun with it. This card's fine. Like if you wanna throw it in and run it, it's fine. It's actually pretty quiet. It's fairly power efficient and it runs the games that I've run on it just fine. You see the numbers here. So 5700, if you just wanna throw it in and run it and not really care about how it looks or whatever. And the XT, definitely if you wanna do some modifications, if you wanna play with it, really have some fun. So if anybody out there has the 5700 and they've done this to it, I would love to hear or see down in the comments your results and if you've seen other videos that have had really good results and i'm not talking about showing a window 1080p where it's a low strain on the gpu and you're not pl actually playing a game uh you're just changing the values in afterburner because that doesn't really say a whole lot to me as far as stability and actual performance so all the numbers you've seen here were 100 stable anything more than this on the gpu using afterburner or even Wattman, I even reformatted and did that and tried it with Wattman, no difference. This was kind of the peak that it could get. So I really wouldn't recommend doing the soft power play table mod on the 5700 and run the risk of messing it up. Just leave it as it is. Make, push, push your slider to 20 on the power limit and push your core clock all the way over and just ride with it, have fun and enjoy it. So this has been Keith with WCCF Tech TV. Make sure you're subscribed and hit that notification bell so that we don't miss you in the next one.